gentlemen, welcome back to this Sorry We're Closed podcast. I almost just said Section 10 podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm promoting Jared's podcast even when I'm not on it. Um, but <laughs> welcome back to Sorry We're Closed. Um, my name is Pat Light. If this is the first time you've listened. Uh, and we got some fun things for you today. I was going to originally bring Jared on, um, but... Um, as we continue to try to get, we're trying to get him into the bar. Uh, I think it's more fun that way. Uh, so not yet, but it's coming. Um, but we got some fun things for you today. Uh, today, obviously, as I told you, I'm always going to drink during the podcast. However, I am filming this at 9.33 in the morning. Um, and I'm not a raging alcoholic. So the coffee or the, the drink of choice today is black coffee. So cheers to that. Um. We have an interesting story for you guys today. It's, it's a story I have not told, um, mainly because, uh, you know, it's usually, it would be probably frowned upon um, for people to know it, you know, when I was playing. But um, it's the story of how I got called up and what, you know, surrounded that day. Um, but anyway... We were, it was 2016, I was in Pawtucket, uh, Pawtucket, uh, Rhode Island, which is right next to Providence, which I believe I lived in Providence. Um, and it was, we had a Saturday day game. Uh, the Red Sox were in Houston, um, but we had a Saturday day game, and I believe the Red Sox also had a day game that day. Uh, but a little bit later, oh yeah, it would have been later because they were in Houston, so they were a little bit of a time difference. So they had a little bit of a later game than we did, later start. So we had a Saturday day game, and we finish early, whatever. And typically speaking, on day games, just so you guys know, day games is a, is a really good opportunity for guys to be able to go out and, and have have a few drinks and enjoy like a nice dinner or a restaurant or something like that because you know, you're able to end the night early at a reasonable hour, you know, make sure that you recover, make sure you do all that good stuff so that when you have, when you go back to the, you know, the field the next day, you're not hung over. You don't have that, you know, I went out till three in the morning and now I have a game the next day. I'm struggling. You know, you, you know, you end at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. So you have plenty of time, you know, drink water, get yourself rested and, and make sure you're ready to go for the next day's game. So day games was always one of my favorite days to go out. Um, and it was it was popular amongst the players. So I go out. Uh, I go out in my room. I'm not going to tell you who he is. He's still playing. And uh, he probably he sometimes doesn't like when I say these things. So um, I go out, though, right? I got my roommate. And I had these two nice young ladies um, at the time. Uh, and we're out. We're having fun. We're drinking. You know, it's a little bit of a group of me. some other guys. We're, play, you know, just having a nice time. But, you know, always, as AAA does, as you guys if you, you would know, the AAA players are constantly watching uh, the big league games and constantly checking their phones to see if, you know, especially pitchers, if they're in extra innings, do they need extra arms the next day, so on and so forth, because you're just looking for any opportunity that maybe, especially when you're playing well, that maybe you're the guy they call. Uh, especially, you know, guys that are on the 40-man or, you know, the 40-man the roster down in AAA where they don't have to clear a roster spot, they don't have to do anything. It's just... They need extra arms. They got into a tough situation, and and you know they're getting the call. Typically, I was one of those guys. I loved watching the big league games. Um, I never rooted against anyone, uh, but you know if I started struggling or the game or maybe it was just a high scoring affair or a very low scoring affair where you know it's a pitcher's duel, but we're running through arms because you know no one can break the tie. You know, I would watch those games and be like, you know, all of a sudden now the games are going well, you know, as far as for a AAA guy where they might need an arm the next day. And the inner monologue of your life or your your season so far is is starting to go. You're, talk, you're talking about, have I been pitching well? Have I, have I done what is expected of me? Am I on the 40-man roster, which I was at the time? Do you have what it you know what it takes so far to pitch at the big leagues? Do do you think the team thinks that? Uh, have you been dominating AAA? Have you been mediocre? Have you sucked? You know all of those things run through your head, and you look through your stats, and now you start comparing yourself to the other guys on the team, the other op- guys who you believe have the opportunity of getting called up to the to the big leagues and might having a and possibly having ability the ability to to jump you. 
you know, who, how many 40 man guys are in the bullpen? Would they call a starter because they need a guy with, you know, that can go multiple innings? You know, what do they need? Um, this all goes through pitchers' heads, especially um, relievers' heads, pretty much on a daily basis uh, down in AAA. It is, it's exhausting, <laughs> but it's, it's what, it's what, what happens. Uh, these guys, you know, most of them haven't made, the, you know, not most of them, I would say probably 50-50 haven't made their debut yet. And the other 50% are all guys trying to stick. So they all want their next chance. They all want what is, you know, what they need to get to the big leagues and stay there. Um, so it's an exhausting process down AAA. AAA is, is, it's fun. I have a great time. I had a great time down there, especially in Pawtucket. But it is an exhausting process. And then you have guys that you know are competing with you, that you know are, you know, are not maybe not hoping for you to um, do bad, but you're definitely not losing sleep if they don't do bad. Um, so it's, it's again, as I like to always say, it, it's more or less a shit show in AAA. So flash forward, again, we're in April of 2016, uh, it's a Saturday day game. We go out for drinks. We're having fun. We meet some people. For whatever reason, I'm not paying attention to the Boston game. I remember sitting at the bar after eating, um, having a beer, um, talking about whatever. I don't even remember what we were talking about. And me just glancing over at the TV and noticing that the Sox game was on. And um, Rowanis Elias, or Elias, I think I called him Elias. I don't even know how to pronounce his name, was pitching for the, for the Red Sox. I think he started that day. And I hadn't even noticed the game really at all. I remember seeing him throw a few pitches, and I then I don't think I paid much attention to it for the rest of the day. I was you know I was having fun, you know, trying to get away from baseball a little bit. So um, I didn't notice that they were struggling. If if uh, they needed more guys the next day, or if there was possibility they would need more guys the next day, I didn't notice any of that. So. We're done. We're we're hanging. At, we're we're decided to, to go home. We're talking about maybe you know going out a little bit later for you know maybe at night, but um, probably not. It wasn't going to be one of those nights. Uh, so we we were all we were all going home, just you know have a little little get together at our place, and we were just you know talking, you know hanging out, not doing much, watching TV with some drinks. Um, and I remember I'm sitting when you walk into my my AAA house, the house that I had. He walked in, and if you go in straight to the back of the house, that's where the kitchen was. And if you you walked into the kitchen, and then you make like a sharp, like jug handle, is because I'm a Jersey guy. It's a jug handle, so you go all the way around, and you come over here. And this is where the stove is, and there's like also like a counter and stuff like that. I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there. It's me, um, these two girls, my roommate, um, and we're sitting there, and I'm talking uh I, I think to to my roommate and all of a sudden my phone starts you know vibrating or whatever so i'm like all right so you know you just you don't think anything of it at the time you just start you just go down look at your phone in the middle of the conversation and i see i didn't have the number saved but i saw a boston number now all at least in boston I'm pretty sure in, um, not always, sometimes it's in the spring training place, but all people in Boston, uh, all AAA managers, all managers, everyone had a Boston area code number. So all of those guys, anytime you got a call when you're in, you're in the minor leagues, anytime you're getting a call from a Boston number, you, first of all, you know to pick up, but you also know something's up. So there's, they're, they're, they want to tell you something. In AAA, it's you know amplified much more because a lot of times these calls are either tremendous news or some, sometimes bad news. You know, sometimes you know they need to send you down or something like that. Uh, but as I got where in my shoes, you know, on the forty man roster, I was I was pitching really well. Um, I had a really good start to the season, and I can I had I didn't know if the team needed arms from the day before, but. It's it's odd to be getting a call. At, it was like nine o'clock at night from a Boston number randomly. It, it was it was an odd call. So I just looked down at my phone and I looked back up at my roommate and I just like it's a Boston number. And he's like, What? So I was like, you know what, let me take this outside, right? 
let me make sure <laughs> whatever's about to happen is I'm by myself for. So I go outside. I remember I went into, uh, we, I walked out the front door. So I went all the way on the other side. Everyone was in the kitchen. So I went all the way out to the front door and out and like by myself in the driveway. Like I didn't even allow anyone to even see me or be around me. I didn't want that. So I answered the phone. Um, and when people call you up, it's typically, it's your manager. If you're, your AAA your manager is going to call you. So, uh, at that time, or I'm, I'm not sure if he still is. I think he is. It's Kevin Bowles. Bowlesy is what we called him. Bowlesy was on the phone. Love the guy. Really nice guy. Um, Bowlesy calls me and he goes, Hey, Pat. And I was like, I was like, what's up, man? And I don't even, honestly, at that point, blackout. No clue what he said. Absolutely not. Not from drinking, just from pure excitement. And I knew it was coming. And so, He's like, yeah, whatever, you get called to the big leagues, blah, 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 congratulations, all that good stuff, right? So I'm an emotional wreck. Um, if you guys didn't know that already, you probably don't because I haven't shown that on a podcast before and don't plan to. But, you know, waterworks for sure. Waterworks everywhere. Um, not like ugly crying, but like, you know, just tearing up. You know, a lot, a lot went into that that part of, you know, your whole life leads up to that moment, essentially, for baseball, or at least for baseball players. So the call happens. I'm a little buzzed. I'm not going to lie. I've been drinking a little bit, was not expecting this in any capacity. Didn't think, I mean, I guess I wasn't paying attention, but there was no inkling in my head that I needed to possibly prepare for the next day in the big leagues. Let alone, I just thought, you know, it was going to be a regular day. I, you know, I know I didn't pitch that day on, uh, on that particular day in AAA, so I might have pitched the next day. But it was, there wasn't any concern about it because uh, I, I, it was a home game. So you, you wake up late, you end up getting to the field, you're fine, you have plenty of time to recover, all that good stuff. Well, as it were pertained to my life, that didn't happen. You get a call. Keep in mind, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. They're in Houston. So getting there is now an issue. Now they have a, the next game was Sunday night baseball. So they are in um, Houston and I can sleep late when I get there. Very difficult to do that. Uh, but so I get to Houston. I have to, it's like a, I remember getting up at like three in the morning, had to get to the airport. I don't remember if I flew out of Providence or if I flew out of Boston, but had to get to the airport. Got to Houston. I got to Houston, I think, early afternoon, late morning. Um, and I remember dropping my bags. And I th- oh, actually, no, I didn't have a room because they were, it was their last day in Houston. So I didn't have a room waiting for me. So I, I called I had, uh, my my buddy on the team, Matt Barnes, who's still there, um, called him. and was just like, hey, listen, I don't have a room. Do you mind me coming? And I don't have nowhere else to hang out. And I was the new guy. I didn't really want to hang out in the lobby and see everyone. So... I, you know, was like, can I come out? So I did. So I went up to Matt's that room. He was having room service, hung out there for a little bit, get on the bus. As we get on the bus, funny little side story, the, it was also the Golden State Warriors were in town playing the Houston Rockets, staying at the same hotel. So I don't remember seeing any of the guys, but I did see their bus and their bus. Red Sox, when Red Sox are in town anywhere, the Red Sox are a huge draw. And the bus, the, the area where the buses are, is usually still a mob scene because people love the Red Sox. Um, especially because this was last the last year of David Ortiz. But everyone was by the Golden State Warriors bus at this time, at least, um, which was un, unusual for when the Red Sox are in town to see anyone else be getting attention. So that yeah, was a little side story. But back to this. So now I'm not that hungover, but I'm a little bit hungover just from the sole fact that I was drinking the night before. Not that much, but I was drinking, and then I hop on a plane at 4 in the morning. And... I get zero sleep, and now I have to stay awake. I can't sleep in the clubhouse my first day in the big leagues. So now I'm awake. I, I can't nap anywhere. I'm wide awake, and I have to go to uh, a Sunday night baseball game. And theoretically, they probably need me. So I'm probably pitching. So <laughs> I got to lock it in. Got to lock it in. So... Anyway, the game's going on. It doesn't seem like 
Like we're going to, we're really going to need me. It's a pretty close game. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be pitching a rookie here, especially as on his debut. Um, it's just, it's doesn't, it's not lining up like a typical debut would for, for someone. So I can't remember if we get into extra innings, if we don't get extra innings, but I warmed up once. They didn't need to sat me back down. I remember warming up a second time, sat me down. Don't need you. Warming up a third time, this is when he, uh, Heather, Heater's in the building. So Heath Embry, his nickname's Heater. This is when Heater's in the game. We're in, we're in like the last inning. And we're, I think we're up 4 3 or something like that. And I think it's second and third with, you know, two outs, or whatever. But they had sat me down and got me back up again. And I remember, I don't want to blow up anyone's spot, but I remember my, my bullpen coach and um, Stephen Wright, who was in the, in the knuckleball guy for, for Boston at the time, just absolutely blowing up John Farrell. And just absolutely torching the guy about how, how could you have possibly had gotten him up this many times and, you know, of Ricky. And they, I remember Stephen Wright said that it looked like my eyes were so red that it looked like I had been smoking weed for the last, tw- you know, two hours during the game. And it was lack of sleep. You know, I had, I hadn't get, I had, you know, I went to bed, I want to say at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock after packing and, and getting ready to go. And then, fell asleep, had to wake up at like two or three in the morning to catch a taxi over to the airport, you know, four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever, and get out to Houston. So absolute nightmare of a situation to be get up, to get up and down that many times after that type of travel. Uh, But again, you're a rookie, can't say anything. This is not, you just got to get up and you got to go. So I do. But I remember Dana and Stephen Wright absolutely lighting John Farrell up out there in the bullpen. And I'm sure Dan, knowing Dan, I'm sure he said something to John when he got into the, into the clubhouse as well, um, privately, but it was, it, it was, I will tell you as a, as a guy who was freshly there in the big leagues, it was difficult. It was difficult, you know, trying to get up and down and be getting ready, you know, getting hot and, and cooling down, getting hot and cooling down that many times after very little sleep, tough travel, it's not an easy job, but you're in the big leagues. You're a professional. You're supposed to be able to do this. Um, so that's what I did. Lo and behold, two outs, base, uh, second and third, get a call. Heater's been in the game for a little bit now, and they get a call, and it's it's, it's John, or actually it's probably Carl, uh, the pitching coach, but he calls down and goes, if Heater doesn't get this guy out, or if he walks him, whatever. Uh, Pat's in the game. So keep in mind, it's a one-run ball game. It's second and third. There's two outs. And it's Sunday night baseball against the Houston Astros, <laughs> one of the best hitting teams in baseball. I mean, I'm sitting there. My <laughs> my heart is probably pounding at like 109,000 beats per minute. Uh, and it's 3-2 for Heater right now. If he walks this guy, I got bases loaded, two outs, Sunday night baseball as my first ever appearance in the big leagues. Absolutely, unequivocally, horrible situation to come into. You know, I like to get thrown in the fire. I like to get thrown in the fire too. But to get thrown into, and if you and honestly, if you perform, you get, you get a lot of, a lot of, you know, brownie points. Um, you know, going towards your, your resume, get called up again because now all of a sudden now you get thrown into the fire immediately. Now they think you can handle anything, which would have been true. However, thank the good Lord that I didn't want to do it. He just struck the guy out. So ended up, we win the ball game. We're done. I get going to the clubhouse. I'm counting my blessings. I was, it was going to be tough for me to pitch that day. Um, and I'm known as, you know, hard throwing, you know, fastball splitter. So it, it, I need to have my stuff, especially the first first day. So long story short, not long story short, I just I just talked about this for 20 minutes, but absolute crazy of a whirlwind of a day 
you get called up, you go from going out to a restaurant to, you know, in the bullpen in Houston in under 24 hours uh, and, and pitching uh, against one of the best teams in baseball at the time, it was, it was insane um, and awesome all at the same time. So that's my call up story. It was, uh, it was fun. It was exciting. Obviously all that good stuff. I ended up going on and to leave that night for Atlanta and I ended up pitching either the first or second game in Atlanta after David Price pitched. Um, and David went eight innings, you know, pitched amazing. And, uh, I came in for the ninth to close it out in like a, we were winning like 12, one perfect scenario for a, for a, uh, for a young guy coming into a game. Uh, you know, it was easy. I, I think I, I think I, I gave up a ground ball, ground ball, single ground ball, single, uh, two, you know, great pitches. I thought, I thought I had, you know, it was good. And then, um, had my, my big league moment of walking guy in four pitches because now it's like, you know, son of a bitch, I'm first and second, no outs in my debut. This was not how this was supposed to go. And then, uh, I, it, three, three straight ground ball outs. I think they might have, I think two to Travis Shaw, one to Xander Bogarts, um, uh, and I see Rick Porcello, Clay Buchholz, you know, running out of the the, the the dugout, laughing their asses off at me because they realized what was going on. But I can tell that story another day because Hanley talked to me in the mound. It was it was a fun time, but the call up was as electric as it as it is made out to be, what you would think it would be, and then adding on, you know, a little bit of drinking the night before, adding on. Getting you know you know called to warm up about five times before actually never actually going into the game, um, it was a, it was a zoo. Uh, so that's what it is. Let's talk a little baseball though as we as we transition here. We got the Red Sox just signed a guy by the name of Zach Godley, uh, pitcher. He, I think he was in, he was in Arizona last year. Um, I got his stats right here. We got four four and five last year with a five nine seven ERA, thirty three games started, thirty three games nine started, two saved, ninety two innings pitched, seventy strikeouts, one five WHIP. I'm sure he's a tremendous person. Honestly, with the way the Red Sox are, and I understand, I understand the Reds. I, I would have been okay if we saw a guy here. It looks like an inning eaters guy. It looks like he's going to come in in games where they're not doing all that well. Which I actually, I'm going to get a little you know twist on this. This guy might be the type of guy you know. I see like a Brian Johnson in the back of that guy Hall, who I just watched the other day, has possibly any innings eaters these coming this coming year. You know, this guy might take that role, and these two other guys might be in their starting rotation. It might be something how they how they how they attempt to do this, but uh, it gives them some pitching depth. I, it's not it's not a great sign. I don't think it's it's going anywhere. I would have liked to see more. You know, I think a young guy with you could have got some more experience um, in trying to make uh, this maybe not make this team, but be able to get some experience in a shortened season that you know seemingly doesn't really matter all that much. So I, I don't love the sign, but um, you know who knows? Maybe you know the four and five in the in the National League you know is not great, but um, the five nine seven. But who am I to talk? I have a career eleven ERA, so. You know who knows? Maybe Zach's you know got something good for us in the AL East, but I, I, it's going to be tough. I would have preferred younger guy, you know, you know, pitching there. And let's talk about the Mets. <laughs> the Mets. Durong gets, hurt, uh, Durong gets hurt last night. They lost center guard. I know they have Stroman, um, they have Waka. You know, they have some guys behind them, but the Mets in an absolute frenzy to try to sell the team. They're losing the two best pitchers. Their lineup isn't that great. Had an opportunity this year in a shortened season as a team that can get hot and possibly make a run here. When in reality, you know, if they have a 162 game team, it's almost similar to the Red Sox this year. Um, a little better pitching depth, but similar to the Red Sox in the sense that they, they could take advantage of a short season and uh, the teams that are really good getting off to slow starts and, you know, make a wild card, make, you know, win the division and see where it goes in the playoffs. Uh, but now you possibly lose your best two starters. You can't lose to Grom. I absolutely can't lose to Grom if you want any chance at this. Um, but I just think it's amusing with how shitty the Mets are on a consistent basis and how they always seem to have a chance and how they always seem to blow it. It's it's mind boggling. I think they're in the doldrums now. I think of the at least if Degrom goes down, I don't see them doing much at all this year. Um, Stroman, although a good pitcher, you know he's not a, he's not a guy that can keep you out of the the bottom of a 
bottom of a you know uh, of the standings you know as he's seen in Toronto great pitcher need but can't do it himself no pitcher really can so gonna be tough gonna be tough but we'll see but that's it we got that's all we got for today episode two in the books uh, my coffee is delicious and you got to hear my call up story the story that includes drinking that I would have never told to anyone minus the people that were there um, absolute whirlwind of a day exciting times it would be one of two appearances and two call ups to Boston unbelievable uh, coming up next, we get, hopefully we get Jared Carabas. We get, you know, Eric Cubs is, uh, Eric Cubs is actually much closer to, to filming this than, uh, to Carabas is. Uh, but we got some fun people, uh, stay tuned guys. And I'll see you next time.